Here we are at Broadway Upholstery School with another video, and I had an interesting chair come to me, a little side chair. And the customer doesn't want the caning anymore, um, so she wants us to make an upholstered seat. Um, we're going to try to minimize it as much as we can with an upholstered seat, but you can definitely do this for your clients or friends who, a lot of times I'm finding that it's hard to find somebody to do caning uh, anyhow, and this customer uh, had a hard time, but she really did want a, a little bit more comfort on this. So, um, uh, the canning on this is definitely not usable. So, as you can see, so what I'm going to do is now, if it, if it wasn't, if somebody just wanted the canning covered, I'd probably try to save the canning. But in this case, um, I the canning can't be saved. So, I'm going to cut it away. The old canning. So this video is going to be about how to get it upholstery ready. We're not going to upholster this, the whole thing. We don't know the fabric for it yet. We're just going to show you pretty much um, how to get it ready for to be upholstered. Okay. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go inside here to try to remove uh, the entire piece of canning. I'll tell you why, because I don't want to create any more damage to the wood. And the client's expressed an interest in really minimizing how far out the upholstery is going to come. We're going to upholster this from the top. We're not upholstering the whole thing. That was her request. She wants to try to save as much of the wood uh, showing as possible. So that's why I want to keep this on. I'm going to use some of this probably for, to staple my webbing, which, which is the next thing we're going to do. So we need to make sure we have a, a good substantial piece of webbing. We are going to have to staple into the frame, which the customer is cool about, which I made sure she understood that it's fixed. It's not just yeah, there is another thing that we could do. We could actually make a board for this and upholster that, but she didn't like that idea because she wants nails. She wants French nails around here, so that's what we're going to do. We, if, if you want French nails, it has to be fixed. Um, so let's, let's, let's go to try to get a little webbing on this to see what's going to happen. You need to be really careful with these frames. These frames are not you know, like real upholstery frames. So I think I want to put three pieces of webbing on here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start this piece first. And I'm doing this on the floor for the benefit of you guys. Let's see what I'm trying to do here. So I'm going to try to stay inside the caning if I can on this side of the caning towards the interior of the chair. I'm going to fold this over. I'm going to try to get, I'm folding it over and I'm going to staple. And what you want to do is 3 8 inch staples. Get your 5 in. And then we're going to take our webbing stretcher, stretch it. Fortunately, there's a spot to stretch the. And I'm going to try to stay inside the caning. Okay, there's one. I'm going to cut that off. And then we're going to staple this down. Okay. So if you've seen my other videos, you know that you don't want to pre-cut your webbings because you waste webbing when you when you tend you tend to waste a lot of webbing when you cut pre-cut them. I'm gonna stretch that. Get that stapled. So the other reason I want to keep within the within the cane work is um, you know, in case they ever want to go back to caning on this chair, they can easily enough. I'm not. I'm trying not. I'm trying to minimize any work out onto the finished wood. You know, and, it go, and of course, this is the client's request, so I have to abide by the client. Some people at home probably going, "Oh no, I can't believe he's he's not going to cane that chair." You know, sometimes you have to do what the client wants. This, I'm trying to minimize it though. Minimize what the work that I have to do on it. That's the point of this video. Is that it can be done. But it doesn't have to be done in a heavy way. You know, we're gonna we, we have to keep to the profile of this chair. This chair is off the ground to a certain height. It's already, you know, the seating is appropriately uh, from the floor up, it's appropriate. 
So we don't want to be adding too much filling on this, and I'll explain that in a minute before we, before we let go, right? Alright, and then I think I'm going to do two pieces of webbing side to side, and I'm going to interlace them. I think two substantial. Okay, and I want to show you how to overcome, it's a little trick, how to overcome when you have a, a post in your way, like we have here. Um, so what you can do is probably, in this case here, you could totally disregard the post, um, but make sure that the webbing is straight. So look what I'm doing. I'm just going to come up. I'm ignoring this fact for a minute, stretching the three quarters of the portion of the webbing. And I'm stapling that. I'm going to let this go now. Cut that. And then we have that tight enough. That's fine. Okay, and then we're going to alternate the weave. We're going to come under, over, under on this one so that it's, it's maximum strength. Like so. Give that a little back there. And now I can, I can use the webbing stretcher behind this post. Why well, I did too kind of go around the post. It's really important to get a good stretch on this, but you can overstretch this. So when you're doing this, I mean, I could pull this so hard that I could pull that reel out. So what, you, what you're looking for is drum tight on this. Drum tight. Remember that. Right? So we're going to get this upholstery ready. So there's one other thing that we're going to do is we're going to put burlap. And the reason burlap is, exp is really important is because it fills in the rest of the holes here. And without the, without the burlap over the webbing, um, it would eventually come up to the top and it would look like a checkerboard on your fabric. It doesn't matter how thick the padding is either. It's amazing. So this is really traditional and it's the best way. Do not use nylon. Do not use a replacement like fabric. It won't do the same thing. Um, the burlap's the best thing. I'm going to fold and staple around the back first. And then I'm going to stretch it to the front, hand stretch it, not with your webbing stretch, right? Okay? And stretch it. I'm trying to stay within the boundaries of the webbing and where I hit my webbing. Okay, on one side you can fold. And the other side is going to be always your stretch side hand stretch side. It doesn't get folded right away. It gets stretched first. Stretch, tat, stretch, tat. And I'm just going to do a little bit more trimming on the webbing before I fold it. It's easier to trim before you fold it, right? Finish this up. Trying to be careful not to go over to the finished wood. There you have it. Um, so you are upholstery ready. Uh, I'm probably only going to put, believe it or not, a layer of cotton over this and the fabric. I'm going to pin tack my fabric on around a little bit over, over the edge here, and then I'm going to put French nails in it. But um, it's important not to profile this, stuff this out too much. Everybody wants you to overstuff things, but you don't want to overstuff this. Keep to the profile. So that's it. So we'll see you next time. Please subscribe uh, also because uh, I have a very good friend who's been following me for a while. She said she watches all my videos. I haven't seen her in a while. Uh, she came in uh, the shop the other day and I, I said, have you subscribed? She said, no. I said, come on, man. Uh, you have to subscribe for us to just to keep continue and, and to just to give us, make us feel good by subscribing, please. Thanks. We'll see you later.